Okay, good morning, guys. I am the first one this morning. And uh, this is my presentation about the OSPF mistakes. Uh, I am Lorenzo Busatti from, from Italy. I am in this business for about 20 years, 22 this year. And this, this is the giant cake that we made two years before for our 20th birthday. I am from Italy, from Tuscany, on the seaside, is there. And this is where I live, with nice hills, nice place to see. And I am also the founder of the Routing and Wireless Academy, and one of the five trainers of the Riga Bootcamp that we have twice for years, one in summer and one in the winter. It's a very good place for having a, a full week of trainings, with uh, trainings classes, uh, the visit of the city, uh, network games. Uh, and it's very interesting and it's very fun. And this is what used to say our survivors after the week of training. We are able to deliver up to 10 training classes in one week, five to five at the same time each three days, so you can combine your schedule in any combination, and we have an exhibition there in the moon. Okay, guy, installing and configuring OSPF is about understanding more than just how to configure Radio OS to avoiding common mistake and, and assumption made when deploying OSPF with Radio OS leads to a higher quality of installation. We will be cover just some of the pitfalls we've seen and show to avoid them. Delivering NTCRE and INE training classes make me aware of the lack of knowledge of the protocol and many misunderstanding by most of the technician. OSPF is a very nice protocol but usually people forget basic things and I will focus today in these three things. There was 10, but when writing the slides, 10 things maybe require two hours and will be boring and require four times a lot. So this morning we will just see OSBF basics, the common OSPF mistakes and, just, and one very nice OSPF extra tips that maybe you don't know that exist. How about the OSPF protocol? Is open shortest path first? It calculates the shortest route to a destination through the network based on the Dijkstra algorithm. And if and when the network topology change, then the routing table will also be recalculated again. This is how work OSPF in pills in just a few seconds. It's a routing protocol of IP networks. It uses a link state routing LSR algorithm. It falls into the group of IGP, is within or inside a single autonomous system or AS, and is defined by OSPF version 2 of IPv4 and version 3 for IPv6. And router OS implement OSPF version 2 and version 3. And it's working very well. How about the Dijkstra algorithm? Also known as the shortest but first, or SFP, SPF, sorry, is an algorithm to finding the shortest path between nodes, so between two routers, start and then point of the traffic. In a graph, a graph is not a graphical thing, but it's abstract data type. The shortest path means the cheapest path, that means the sum of the cost of the output interface of each router for the full path. I think that everybody in this room knows these things, are very basics about OSPF, but we are, when using, use to forget those things, the sum of the cost of output interface 
of each router through the full path. We have to remember these things every time we are working of in OSPF in any network. And this is the a slide that really likes. It's quite easy to implement OSPF protocol in a network. Just put an IP address in the same subnet between two routers, pass this code into the routers, and OSPF will work. It's by a technician point of view, it's a kind of stupid thing to do at home, but it works, yes. And this is our technician that say, okay, I pass this code, my network start to run the USPF protocol, and now you start to think, sorry, he start to think that he is an OSPF engineer because OSPF is running, and it's running well. Network type, priority, DR, BDR, he don't need this F things, but default, <laughs> everything is working, or everything is just working. He don't know why, but it's working. But when the network start to grow, he will not be smiling anymore. That's why you need a better knowledge of the, how OSPF works. I will not to cover all the aspects of the OSPF, of course, uh, just not to be boring, uh, because I can't, cannot deliver an NTCI training in 20 minutes. We will see some of the most interesting things, tips and mistakes that we can do using the OSPF protocol. And this is the first point, the OSPF router POV, P-O-V, or point of, point of view. It's when I explain to my colleague, no one understand what I mean. See, what are you meaning with point of view of OSPF? It's not a camera, it's not a GoPro, yes. But seeing something like the GoPro, yeah. The point of view, one of the things that usually my students don't understand well. So, in an OSPF network, there is no main or central router that know the topology of the network and the shortest path between them. There is no a central router that control all the network. This is not OSPF. And OSPF router, so each individual OSPF router think that he is the core of the network, regardless of the position into. Let me show you. Here we have just a simple network, OSPF network, involving six routers. Each output interface is showing his own cost. And there is a router that controls the network? No. Each router will think individually or think different. So, router five think to be the center of the core. And he build his point of view about the rest of the network. And the same for every router. Router three will build a map through the networks for reaching each destination. And I have some slide that we show you. Then each router individually calculates all the paths and their cost for each no destination. Then choose, thanks to the Dijkstra, the cheapest one, the cheapest total one, from his point of view, his own point of view. I will not show you all the possible combination in the next slide because it's just for making an example. Take into account from router one to router three. Sorry for the back. From router one to router three. So, we have a lot of many pets available. It's not all, just a few of them. So we have this pet that will cost in total 30. This pet will cost 40. The green one costs 50. The orange one costs 50. The blue one is 40. And the violet one, 40. So at the end, which path router one will choose to reach router three? The cheapest one, that is 30. Does not mean how many hopes, but the 
total cost. So 20 plus 10 is 30. That's it. And I built a nice slide, I think, for showing a better view. This is how router one see the paths for reaching router three. That's all the, all the alternative, like I show you in the previous slide, using router two, six and three, six, four and three, five, four and three, five, six and three, five, six, four and three. These are the total cost of the pet, and the cheapest is, like we say before, is 30. But I show you now from router one to router three, because OSPF calculate the pet from you to another destination, and not the opposite, just one way. So just, sorry for the term, just the upload is not about the download. Now, using the same slide, same example, and same cost, this is from router three to router one. And the cheapest is 40, the orange one. So we have different path from between, sorry, router one and router three. This is the point of view of router three for reaching router one, and the cheapest one is 40. So using four, six, five, and one. And this is the result between, this is between router one and router three. So from router one is this path, from router three, the other one. So now I demonstrate to you that you can calculate all the path cost and the path from both point of view. This is one of the common mistakes in OSPF, just checking one way and not the opposite. Now you have the, the role of the backbone area. The backbone area it forms the core of the OSPF network. You cannot avoid to have that. The backbone area is responsible for distributing routing information between other non-backbone areas. We have area one, two, X, doesn't matter. The backbone area and ABR router that will connect the non-backbone areas. Each non-backbone area must be directly connected to the backbone area. Directly, and this is the example, all through a virtual link. And this is another example. So we have the area directly connected to the backbone one, and other areas connected to the backbone area through virtual links. They are in a dotted, you know? That's it. And this is quite common to understand and to know. Is but what I have to say to you, another point of view of the networks and the layers, you, can create, you cannot create no more than two layers of areas on top of the backbone one. Let me show you a design. If I have a backbone area, I can create one level of areas directly connected to the backbone one, one layers of areas connected to the backbone through a virtual links, and with the virtual links, you can jump just one area, not two. And this is the same example. This is the structure view from, I say to see, from the side, you know, if it's in 3D. But looking from the top is something like a flower. You have the backbone area in the center, the main areas connected directly to the backbone one, and then other areas connected to the backbone through one virtual links. So this is the logical, typical shape of the USPF areas, like two rows of petals attached to the central core of the backbone one, and think about that when design 
your OSPF network because it's difficult to design uh, OSPF network with areas following the topology maybe of your structure through cities or regions or nodes. Maybe you try to build a very weird structure connecting areas and maybe will not work well. That's very nice. Okay, we have now this guy again. These are common to about OSPF. OSPF is weird. It works when it wants to. When it doesn't work, to work doesn't work. Let's take a look about there too. OSPF network type is one of the most weird things that you can do in OSPF. From the wiki, if you take a screenshot, you can see network type can be broadcast, MBMA, point-to-point, -point, and point-to-multipoint. By default, from layer two uh, interfaces, is broadcast. By default, is broadcast. If you don't change these settings, will be broadcast. How work? The broadcast and the MBMA is the second one. They elect a designated router or DR and a backup designated router BDR. The point to point and the point to multi point does not. So there's two network type doesn't have DR and BDR. The first two, yes. And probably our friend use the broadcast by default. So the link is working fine. It is a network with two routers. One is DR, the other BDR. Everything is working fine. One router reboot for upgrade, power failure, doesn't matter. The DR just change. So this router maybe reboot and become DR and BDR. The switch role. But they work again nice, so there is no problem. This is what he think. The role, the designated router and the backup router are useful when you have multiple OSPF routers in the same layer two broadcast domain to reduce the OSPF traffic. You can read this at home, it's just a definition. I, I want to read again. You have multiple OSPF routers, like 3, 5, 10, 20, doesn't matter. This is an example. You have six router in the same layer two broadcast domain. In this case, you have to use broadcast or MBMA. You will have one DR, one BDR, and these two are responsible to exchange routing of information between them to reduce the traffic. This is the correct application of the broadcast and NBMA. But let's now take into account a quite common in real life application of OSPF. Maybe you have a link between two sites with radio, copper, fiber optic, critters, something, okay? You are using a layer two device to connect them, like a radio, high capacity radio, you know, at uh, La Senza band, uh, bringing gigabit, you know. And then you need a router for running OSPF connected to the radio. Router one, router two, it's very easy. Connected into the ethernet interface. And between them, we are running an OSPF network. Using network type, Default, so broadcast. So the network will elect what? One DR and one BDR. By default, network type is broadcast and priority is one. We will have DR and BDR. They will elect by priority file if you fill this file. If you just leave by default at one, we'll use router ID to elect DR and BDR. And this is running its work. Everything is running fine until something happens. 
the link go down. The link go down. But the Ethernet port of both of the router are still running. The Ethernet are connected. What will happen? Each other will not listen the other anymore and say, OK, I am alone. I will be the R. And we have both of the router are the R at the same time because they are not connected anymore. It's a very common scenario. 99% of network have <laughs> this shit. And the question is, what happens when the layer 2 link will be restored? It's very nice. It's amazing. There we start to fight one against the other because both are now DR and no one wants to be a BDR anymore. I am DR, no, I am me. What happened? The result is that the USPF network is not working anymore and usually will require a lot of time to recover. And usually our engineer have to reboot. <laughs> I'm hearing you. <laughs> yes, I did the same mistake in the past. <laughs> this is why I'm smi smiling. Yeah, just reboot, and because OSPF required to reboot. This is what he think. No. Or maybe OSPF protocol have bugs. Or worst, rather OS does not implement the SPF protocol well. <laughs> Do we have a better solution? Yes. People that are smiling yeah, have the solution because they tried once in their life this behavior. Use the correct or the proper network type for this scenario. We don't need DR or BDR between just two routers. We don't need it. We have to choose point to point, exist. The point to point is a network type that will run OSPF between two routers only and does not elect a designated routers. This is why it works. And our guy now is happy. Think about next time you are arranging an OSPF network, think about network type into the interface. Now, the last thing, the extra tips. This is a very new and very interesting feature that you can implement in OSPF. I will show you two examples for first. It's quite easy to use two OSPF pet as a file over. Uh, I think that almost everybody in this room can know how to run this behavior using two paths, connecting to site, site A, site B, adjusting the cost accordingly, 10, 10, 30, 30, what we will have, that all the traffic will go from site A, so between router one or router two, is the, is the same, site A, to site B, all the traffic, so upload and download, will flow through the path one. And this is work very fine, it's very nice. In case of failure, all the traffic will flow through the backup link that we are used to call it as a backup. And this is one of the most used OSPF technique into the ISP or WISP industry. But we have the advantage that the traffic will flow into the same path. The counter side is that one unused pet, you are paying one pet, is fiber, copper, radio, doesn't matter, paid for just use it, just in case of failure. He will sleep the rest of the time. The other scenario is to load the sharing the traffic between the two pets. Setting this cost, 1030, 1030, this way, what we will have, that the traffic between router one or router two, so the site A to the site B, will go from site A to this path, look at the arrow, from site B to the other path. Can be a good idea if you have 
two wireless link with different capacities and no other choice, of course. And in case of failure, all the traffic will use the other path, so you have redundancy. So you are now using both paths, but you have asymmetric traffic that maybe is not what you want. And often, this is a consequence of a bad design in OSPF network, like I was showing you in this previous slide, you know, in the first one, with two different paths between two routers. So, the question is, it is possible to use two different OSPF paths for load sharing and redundancy without using MPLS and traffic engineering, just OSPF? This is what we have to reach. I would like that router one will use only the path one for upload and download the same path, so same latency and so on. From router two to site B, the path two. And I want that in case of failure, all the traffic will use the other path. It is possible just using OSPF. So think about the Dijkstra algorithm that we calculate the sum of the cost of the output interfaces of each router of the full path. Having router one and router two with only one output interface, like Ethernet, for example, it is difficult to steer the traffic as we would like to. One solution can be to use multiple physical or virtual interfaces, like the VLANs. We can use the VLANs to create multiple separate OSPF network on different physical output interfaces for the OSPF point of view. This way we can steer the traffic as we like to do. I've often defined this, think of about layers. And I have a good design that requires a lot of time to draw, <laughs> to making it simple for your eyes, I hope so. This is the example taken from the previous slide. Okay, sorry, I will jump back again. I will take into the account, sorry, the design involving the six routers, okay? Site A up to router five and six. I'm using the same name. Let me show you here. Using the VLANs, this is router one, router two, three or four. This is site A. We, here we have the two paths between site two. These are the border routers of the site two, site B, sorry. The idea is to use VLAN for running parallel OSPF layers. So running different OSPF networks, each color is not a random color. Each color represents a different OSPF network. So I have one OSPF network between the blue, one between the red, one between the violet. We have, I'm running here, three different OSPF networks. You will calculate all the cost at home downloading the slides. If you calculate all the path cost, what we can obtain? This result. From router one, the cheapest path is 10, 20. So, and the opposite, 10, 20, that's it. So, from router one, we'll use only the path one through the VLAN 11 in this example. And from router two, we'll use the Ethernet one, it's cheaper, 10, 20. And the opposite, 10, 30. This is the path. So we are steering the traffic as we want without using complicated setup, just VLANs and multiple OSPF network, and we succeed into the task. What happened? In case of failure of path one, that the traffic from router one will change not through the VLAN 11 anymore, but through the Ethernet one to router six. 
and we have a backup links, this path is not working anymore. And the opposite, if the path two was eaten some, by some critters, all the traffic will flow through the path one using the other VLAN in this example. It's not difficult to design this one. Using the layers of the VLAN and OSPF network, you can engineer the traffic using all the paths, main and backups, using them, avoid asymmetric, asymmetric traffic, and using the same path from the same source. The OSPF world is very interesting. This protocol can help you a lot for expanding your network. You have just to know him well before enabling. I was not able to explain all the things that I plan to because they are too many for our time slot and location today. But here at the MAM, you can talk with me and the other trainers at the bootcamp stand in the exhibition room. And I hope you enjoy my presentation to learn or discover at least one interesting thing for about OSPF and use Rather OS as OSPF router. So, see you in Riga. Thank you for listening, for enjoy the MAM. I will be glad to speak to you at exhibition table. Thank you.